Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I'm here today at the James Julia Auction House taking a look at some of the guns that they're going to be selling in their upcoming Spring of 2018 Firearms Auction. Today we're taking a look at a particularly rare version of the Colt BAR. This is an R75A, and it's actually the last version of the commercial BAR that Colt manufactured. This version of the gun kind of starts in 1924 when Colt released the R75, which was uh, really their first commercial iteration of the BAR, and notable for having a pistol grip instead of the original traditional stock of the military 1918 BAR. Uh, this was definitely an improvement in handling of the gun, uh, and it, well, it's hard to say. It was sort of successful for Colt in that these were expensive guns, and so it didn't take all that many uh, to make a substantial amount of money for them. On the other hand, they didn't sell a whole lot. We're talking not more than a few thousand of these sold over the course of maybe 10, 20 years. Um, in fact, FN was one of the major clients for Colt of these guns through the 1920s until uh, FN and Colt uh, eventually came to a sort of a, a licensing agreement whereby FN was, FN started production of Browning automatic rifles, and they got to be the exclusive distributor for basically Europe, where Colt retained distribution rights to North and South America and Asia, as well as the United Kingdom and Turkey. So they, they kind of split ways, and FN developed its own version of the rifle similar to this with a pistol grip, um, and that became known as the FN Model D. Uh, it also had a quick detach barrel. Uh, the D is for démontage, or detachable in French. Colt would follow suit, but not until fairly late in the game. So Colt was, in 1924, introduced the, the pistol grip. In 1925, uh, they released an upgraded, updated version that had uh, covers over the ejection port and the magazine well. We'll take a look at those in a moment when we go up close on this thing. Uh, and then it wasn't until actually 1942 that they manufactured this, which is a detachable barrel version under the name R75A. Uh, there was only one client for these, and that was the Netherlands Purchasing Commission. Uh, and in the latter half of 1942, they manufactured 832 of these guns for the Netherlands to be presumably sent to the, uh, the Netherlands East Indies or West Indies colonies uh, for combat use there. Now, like the other Colt commercial BARs, this one was made on a commercially marked receiver. And you can see that here, Colt Automatic Machine Rifle cal Model R75 Caliber 30. Now this one is a serial number basically 2974. Uh, the vast majority of the R75As were at the very end of the serial range. Those will fall between basically 4300 and 5300. Uh, however, because this was the end of production, there were some bits and pieces and other receivers that were uh, pulled out to make use of in this order, uh, and this appears to be one of those. So a leftover receiver for some reason that got added into this order. That's it for the markings. If we look at the controls, they're pretty much standard for the BAR. So we have a three position fire selector here, safe in the back, automatic, and fire. So full auto and semi-auto. The magazine release button is in the front of the trigger guard, right there. Magazines are a straight-in design. Note that they don't have the extra guide flanges that were added on the 1918A2, uh, because this is still a, a commercial pattern gun. These do use standard BAR magazines, which are all 20 round. That is perhaps one of the shortcomings of the BAR as uh, in use as a light uh, machine gun like the R75A. That magazine really kind of empties itself pretty quickly. Now one of the elements that was added to the 75 and the 75A are dust covers. We have one here over the magazine well, so that keeps debris from getting in there. And when you need to use the gun, you have a little handle, and that folds into the bottom of the handguard. There is also a sliding dust cover over the ejection port to seal that off. Definitely a good idea. And this uh, is set up to automatically open when you either when the bolt closes or the bolt opens. So there it is upon opening, or upon closing, and if I open the bolt, it opens that dust cover as well. The sights on the Colt commercial BARs were the same pattern as the early World War I guns, which is to say two nice big apertures, uh, very similar to the model of 1917 Enfield rifles. So that is 
the better of the site version, site varieties that was ever put on, on BARs. We have a couple interesting elements out on the muzzle. One is the folding bipod, and one is this weird thing on the gas system. We'll start by taking a look at the bipod. Note that it folds up uh, into the handguard here for easy storage. I would also point out that this handguard is substantially larger than what FN put on their FN Model D guns, and that's, uh, that's a good thing. I think this offers better protection to the shooter's hand. Anyway, there is a little catch here that holds the bipod closed, so I'm going to open that up. And then I can rotate the bipod up and extend it. Drops down like that. It has a little bit of uh, play to it to allow you to level out the gun on uneven terrain, which is a good thing. The bipod feet are spikes with plates to prevent them from going too deep into the ground, so that'll get a nice, nice firm grip on any sort of soft soil without completely sinking. Now this thing on the gas system is unique to the R75A, and it is there to allow for barrel changes. One of the issues here is you have to release the barrel threads at the receiver, and then you also have to somehow disconnect it from the gas system. So on this, we actually pull this lever down, and what it does is slide the gas block back out of connection with the barrel. So... Can we get this lined up? All right. So you can see right there, the gas block is actually sliding on the gas tube. And when it's all the way back, it is disconnected and allows the barrel to move independently of the gas tube. Uh, we do also have an adjustable gas regulator. I should point out while we're up here, um, that just allows you to, to tune the gun to run on whatever particular ammunition you have. Now, Colt's barrel change system really wasn't quite as elegant as the one that FN came up with, because the next step in removing the barrel is that you have to actually pry this flat spring away from the side of the gun. This locks into one of these barrel flanges, uh, barrel flute, uh, ribs, and prevents the barrel from rotating, because the barrel is held in with an interrupted thread. So what you have to do is... I don't know that there's any way I can do this and make it visible because of how small this latch is. There we go. You have to pull this out, and then you grab on the handle and use this to rotate the barrel about a third of a revolution, which unlocks the threads and allows you to pull the barrel off. Unfortunately, with this particular gun, I don't think the barrel has been changed very much, if at all. It's not like there are a lot of spare barrels for these floating around. And this barrel appears to be stuck in place with some pretty, pretty uh, tenacious carbon buildup. So I didn't want to start hammering on the barrel to try and uh, rotate it free. So unfortunately, you guys don't get to see me pull the barrel out. But what it would normally do is rotate right here, and then the barrel comes out of this collar on the front of the receiver. Like I said, this wasn't the most elegant barrel change system. Of course, this is a finicky thing to try and get to. Um, you're, in theory, you do that with the tip of a cartridge. But the system up front is a little bit kludgy as well. Uh, lining up the barrel exactly on that is a little tricky. And mind you, when you're... It, it's easy enough to undo, I suppose, like this. Um, you wouldn't want to do... You wouldn't want to try and replace a hot barrel, because of course that would be really quite hot to the touch. So a uh, little bit of an issue there. But uh, these were only introduced at the end of production, and Colt only made one run of them for the Dutch, who were at that time understandably kind of willing to purchase anything, because they didn't have a whole lot of options. Now all of this extra stuff on a BAR that is already a pretty heavy gun really adds up. And the R75A was in fact the heaviest variant of the BAR ever produced. Uh, came in at 21 pounds. That's nine and a half kilos. That's a couple pounds more than even the World War II uh, 1918 A2. In order to load this thing, I of course first have to begin by disengaging, or opening up all of the dust covers. Do that. Magazine loads straight in, and we're ready to shoot. Thank you. 
wow. This thing just does not move. It's really interesting comparing this to the Colt Monitor, which is virtually the exact same gun, but without the quick change barrel. And the Monitor, of course, has a shorter and lighter profiled barrel. And the difference between those, those, that gun and this is really quite remarkable. This thing is just steady as a rock. Um, off of that bipod, the sights just don't move when you're shooting, which is quite remarkable. Now, it does that, of course, because it weighs a lot, uh, like five pounds more than the Monitor. The Monitor was a far easier gun to carry around. It was something you could shoot off the shoulder uh, without too much fatigue, but boy, it was jumpy because it was, well, five pounds lighter, but firing full auto 30-06. This is quite the experience. This thing, you know, if it weren't for the magazine capacity, and I gotta say, 20 rounds goes really fast in four round bursts, five round bursts sometimes. Uh, if it weren't for the magazine capacity, this would have actually been a pretty decent light machine gun, I suspect. Still expensive to manufacture by World War II, but not at that much of a disadvantage. It's really too bad that the U.S. military insisted on staying with the, uh, well, the 1918A2, which is not nearly as good of a gun as the Colt here. Now, uh, FN had basically the same sort of thing as this, the FN Model D uh, for demontage or quick change barrel. And, uh, well, of course, the U.S. military didn't adopt that either. So they missed the boat on that one. All right, guys, I know there's one more question that you're all going to ask, and that is, what about shooting it offhand? Well. It's pretty heavy, but especially thanks to the pistol grip, I think we might just be able to do it. So let's find out. That's actually a lot easier than I thought it would be. This thing is really quite slick. Yeah, it turns out you can actually shoot this thing from the shoulder. Once again, being the heaviest BAR variant does have its benefits. It was uh, substantially more controllable than I thought it would be. Definitely pushes you back some, and just carrying this thing is a bit of a burden at 21 pounds, but when it comes to actually shooting it, that weight does work in your benefit. So an extremely cool gun and a very rare version of the BAR. Uh, not the least produced one, but definitely one of the most difficult ones to find today. This is a fully transferable uh, NFA registered machine gun, so if you're interested in adding it to your own collection, well, take a look at the link in the description text below. That will take you to the James Julia catalog page for this gun, where you can see uh, their description, their price estimate, their uh, photos, etc. Everything you need to place a bid on it and make it yours. Thanks for watching.